because I think I have a, feed a, a feeling Hans Peter is going to answer the recording. Um, so, oops, if you could tell me a little bit about, of course, not that it's happening. Uh, if you could tell me a little bit about yourself, um, that will be great. Ah. I'm sorry. So if you could tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, can we start with Dominic? I see your names on the screen. So okay. what's your name? Uh, what degree you're earning? Um, what is your goal after graduation? And how comfortable are you using technology and education? Well, I'm Dominic Brun, and I'm earning the master's degree of the education for math information technology, and music, and um, science. And um, my goal is to teach later, and then maybe uh, combine teaching with psychiatry or something like that. Yeah, but first just teaching. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty comfortable with technology overall, yeah. Okay, thank you, Dominic. And you say you're informatics and music as well yeah exactly okay and maybe i can combine that too in some way but i don't really know how at the moment okay thank you um how about maggie and I'm, I'm saying that right maggie uh yes it's okay my name is margaret oh okay <laughs> but it's okay maggie it's, uh yeah it's better so and i am um, learning now um, i would like to teach uh, many things also uh, math and german french also uh, sports music no no mm -hmm. music uh, and things because uh, i make um, uh, my um, my education for the uh, small children uh, as for um, primary school is here. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it's in America. I don't okay. Know. And we have to integrate um, in for informatic also in in other math. Uh, for example, in math or in German, we have to integrate informatic. And uh, now, so it's very important to learn many about informatic and media. Okay. Yes, you have a question? Yes. Uh, so you no. want to teach elementary education, so you have to yes, learn a range of different topics. Okay. Um, when we went uh, to Switzerland, we actually visit two schools. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them had a grant and they were using computers in the classroom and they were using them to um, practice math. So they will teach concepts related to math and then the uh, children could use the computer to keep on practicing and advancing different levels. So I thought that mm -hmm. was really neat that um, that's a requirement. So. Yes. Um, and uh, how comfortable are you with using technology? Um, mm, uh, I I think not really good, but uh, or really comfortable, but uh, but I do my best, <laughs> <laughs> and I look always that I um, I yes I um, use also technology and. Uh, only because I don't like everything uh, about technology. Um, I don't want to be too much, uh, I don't, don't know how to say, um, with, yes, that I, I use always also for teaching me, myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, that's me. <laughs> I'm always trying to learn myself too. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I forget that there's new technology and I need to get comfortable with it. Um, but 
I know that it's important to to stay up to date with certain things. I don't think you need to know everything, but some things it's important to know. So. Okay, thank you, uh, Maggie. Thank you. Um, how about Michelle? Michelle, can you hear me? Okay, I don't know if Michelle is there. So, okay, so maybe if she comes back, we'll... I think she's here because her mic's not muted now, but um, it seems to not work. Okay. Um, Michelle, do you want to type and see if we can see your chat? Okay. Well, um, if you can type to us, Michelle, um, that will work too. We'll come back to, to check the chat. Um, so another question I have, um, do you all know each other? Yeah, we saw each other for the rest of this week and um, we had four or five modules like this in the past uh, for okay. always one week. Yeah. Okay. Okay, wonderful. So, um, okay, so let's continue. Oh, sorry. Um, so let's continue on. So today we are going to be talking about um, infographics. And um, I love using infographics. I use them all the time in my classroom. I actually now use them on my research or when I'm presenting my research. And I've actually transitioned a little bit out of using uh, Microsoft PowerPoint into using one of my favorites like infographic tools and you're gonna see it. Uh, I have two of them, but um, one of them I like to use for designing larger projects and a different one I like to use when I'm on my phone. But um, overall, infographics are a great way to combine different multimedia elements. So combining images, text, and data. And the whole idea is for you to know or learn how to present um, your data to potential learners without overwhelming them with information. So I found this um, infographic and I thought that you all would appreciate it because it's about switch, switch washes and um, just giving you different kinds of information. It's a little bit blurry, but I thought it was really neat the way that um, they use, um, they do the pie charts, but they're actually kind of like a representation of a, of a wash and then they, do like different flags of different countries to represent export by country. So instead of having you read like a page with all of this information, you just have a graphical way of seeing it. So overall infographics allow you to see um, the data, um, pick a, a way to design how you present that data. And in some instances, you can actually tell a story through the content that you're presenting. And there's also visibility because many of the infographic tools that are being used these days allow you to um, publish or share your content, whether it is an image, um, a PDF, or um, it can also be a link. So it, you can have interactive infographics, for example. So people can go back and look at your content. So there's visibility. Hi. Hello? Hi, is this Michelle? My yeah, that's, that's how now it works. So, it's I, okay, it's I okay. I published my audio and I had to find the solution, but now it will work. Okay, so do we want to go back and can you tell us? Um, yeah, you just um, can show me the PowerPoint. 
but I just know your questions. Yeah, uh, can you can you see them? Uh, no, now not. Okay, this is weird. So um, I am also I also want to get a primary mm -hmm. uh, teacher. Okay. And I all I also uh, want to teach all the subjects, but only um, sport. I want to teach and um, yes. Okay. What subject I will teach. So you will be teaching like physical education? Is uh, that like primary okay. education, yes. Oh that's really neat. I hardly ever meet anyone that wants to teach physical education anymore. Uh, no, I don't want to. Oh you don't, okay. Uh, no. <laughs> but all the other subjects. <laughs> like uh, the languages and maths and German and um what do we also have? Uh, drawing. Yeah. All okay. Things. What grade level? You said elementary. Is there a specific elementary, grade? So it's from the f um, six, eight of six to eight of twelve. Okay. And uh, how comfortable are you using technology? <laughs> so um, <laughs> normally I'm comfortable, but today I had some trouble with headphones. <laughs> And that's fine. For some reason, Zoom can be that way. Like one day it works great, and then the next time you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I well, had someone to make it that they helped me to find. <laughs> I'm so well, thank you, Michelle, for, for <laughs> sharing. And I'm glad that the mic is working now. Yeah. And, <laughs> by the way, uh, Maggie, Dominic, Michelle, you can feel free to jump in at any time and uh, ask any questions that you may have, okay? So we're kind of like a relaxed group today. Um, so um, I wasn't sure if you could see the image or not, but this is the one that I was referring to with the Swiss wash and the way the content is presented. Um, you can see on the top where they have the different washes and it's like a pie chart. Um, so I thought that was really neat. Now, I want to share with you a video. Um, let's see if I can play here. And let me know if you can not listen to the audio. Infographics are insanely popular today, with the number of available images yeah, it works. by 1% every single day. But where did infographics come from, and how did they get to be so popular? Well, infographics, by definition, means images that share information in visual ways. When you break it down like that, so many pieces in our history actually qualify as infographics. Let's take a little trip back in time. Think about the drawings on cave walls or the hieroglyphs in ancient Egypt. They represented letters, words, and full sentences with images alone. The 1600s were a time for cartographers. These map makers put the world into a detailed and visual layout. It was also a time for icons and objects to be used to identify locations. The first instances of infographics as we know them today, as data made visual, dates back to the late 1700s with a chart of wheat prices and labor wages. The creator, William Playfair, might be considered the father of modern-day infographics. He invented line graphs, pie charts, and bar graphs. In 1802, we see this visual of Mount Chimborazo in Ecuador that shared multiple types of information on a specific topic. This was one of the first examples of unique infographics. In the 19th century, pie charts, graphs, and even 3D visuals were popular in newspapers and in political campaigns to represent lots of information. In the mid-20th century, more data visuals and infographics were created, but for the first time through the use of programming software and computers. In 1972, pictogram sets were created for an Olympic sports poster. These figures were later a basis for public signs that we see every day for bathrooms, phones, and gas stations. This is the first modern example of icons that are influential in infographic creation today. By the late 1970s, 
1970s, more and more professors, government institutions, and journalists were pulling and gathering data to turn into infographics for newspapers, publications, public flyers, and posters. In 1982, Edward Tufts published a visual display of quantitative information while teaching at Princeton University. He's considered the father of data visualization because he talks extensively about the need to visually represent data and the importance of data in information collection. Chart junk is Tufts term for icons, layouts, or text that clutters up an image and distracts from the information. With the use of the internet increasing through the early 2000s, more internet companies begin offering unique graphics, and more marketers begin to understand the value of visuals on websites and social media. In 2012, Easily is launched, and by 2012, 2013, infographics are Googled 800% more than in years prior, and 110 infographics are created every day. By 2014, the present day, infographics are used in classrooms, businesses, and online to educate, entertain, and engage. As you can see, infographics have come a long way, but they've been around us all along, and they'll continue to be around, helping us learn, helping us tell our stories visually, and helping us connect with our customers and students in visual communication. Okay. So um, I want to leave it there. So as you can see, there is a long history on the use of infographics. Um, it's not some, it's something that has become kind of popular today because there are different software, but we have been using ways to present information to the world um, for many, many years, decades, etc. cetera. Um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting from the video was the, te the term, um, uh, I think it was called, uh, it was kind of like using things just to like decorate. Um, and I remember when I first started teaching, uh, one of the things that I always felt is that if I had a slide in front of me, I had to have some sort of icon or I just had to have some sort of decoration in there because I just felt like I didn't want to see any empty space. And I quickly realized that I don't need to do that. I actually just need to present the content that is needed and pretty much that's it. Um, so we call them like decorative, decorative images. And um, yeah, so I feel like we often try to have those kind of um, images in our presentations, but really what we need to do is just simplify the information and present it to the learners. Now, in education, specifically there are two main kind of tasks that you can do with the use of um, infographics and um, the very first one is that we can use infographic to teach others to interpret um, so interpret data or make sense of content so when we are teaching others to use infographics to interpret um, we are again, trying to make sense of the data that's presented. We are teaching them to um, critically examine the content, and we're just kind of um, increasing their information literacy. And as you know, today there's um, fake news. Um, well, well, not today, but there, there has always been fake news. The issue is that today, due to different types of social communication, social media, um, fake news can be spread even wider and much quicker. So teaching others to interpret data, you know, interpret infographics can really enhance their way to think about whether what it's being presented to, their, to them is truth or is this um, fake information. Now, um, for me as an instructional design faculty member, I teach my students often to create infographics. So they do have to um, gather and research the, the data, um, but they are focused a little bit more on how the data is presented to others. They are also focused on 
um, making sense of the data because it helps with the data representation. And they have to think creatively on how to present the narrative that they're going to share with others. Thinking about how you're gonna present content, um, you have to identify who your audience is and make sure that you're presenting content in a way that it's interesting to them. So I know, I think many of you mentioned about teaching um, elementary education. So you're not gonna present content for children the same way that you would present it to adult learners, right? Uh, so you have to do an analysis of who your learners are and try to figure out how you can present to the content more effectively to them. Now, um, infographics have been used in um, science communication actually quite often. And mostly the process that is used in um, the design of infographics for science communication is, it's like thinking about putting together a research poster, right? Um, you think about your purpose and the message that you wanna convey to them. Um, you also think about, who, again, who your audience is. When we talk about science, it's a very broad um, umbrella of um, science um, field. So we think about the science field, it's a huge umbrella. So your audience can range widely. Um, but often, you know, what we aim to do is to organize, organize the data and design um, the content the way we want it. We think about the different types of representations. Do we want to include tables? Do we want to include um, images? Um, what other kind of information do you want to include? And then um, you also have to consider your the data and the sources that you are including in your design. I think, um, I don't know for um, Switzerland, but um, we try to make sure, at least with, um, I try to make sure with my students that they always consider the source of the information that they're presenting and that they're always giving credit um, to their sources. I, I am 100% sure um, I did a similar presentation a few years ago and um, some of the students mentioned that in Switzerland you also have very important rules regarding copyrights and making sure you have um, proper citations and things like that. So that is something that you definitely want to keep in mind when you are designing infographics and I'm going to show you a few examples here in a bit. Questions, comments so far? Okay, so I'm gonna assume the silence means, sorry? No, it's fine, thank you. Okay. Um, so one example of um, infographics in science communication um, is, I, I created one um, infographic this past summer. I was actually conducting research with um, a few of, this, of my students and um, we were doing a research project called um, Keeping Streets and Doing It for the Gram. I don't know how many of you are social media users, um, but um, they're very popular uh, with our students here in, um, especially our university, but you know, in general um, in North America. And um, we were conducting a, stu a study on our undergraduate students and their use of their most used social media versus their least used social media. And we submitted a research poster for a conference called Social Media and Society, uh, which was in Toronto this past summer. And I decided that for the poster, I, I wanted to create it in an infographic format, just because I have been to so many poster presentations and they can be very boring or they can be very hard to read the content which makes it boring to attend. I hope I'm not offending anybody. Um, so I actually used Pictoshare and created this infographic. And of course we had to take the poster to the conference so we 
printed it in a cloth, so it was like a like a closed material. And you can see here um, on the right, you can see Renata, um, one of my undergraduate research assistants. She was actually presented at the conference. So I thought it was something a little bit different than the traditional format. Um, and I thought when we went to the conference, they looked a little bit different than the others. I thought it was neat to try something new. Now, there are um, different elements that you have to consider when you are designing infographics. And I'm gonna use my cheat sheet that I have here from the article. Um, can you see that? Can you see the article or can you still see the PowerPoint? Um, still see the PowerPoint. Okay, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using the cheat sheet, sorry. Um, so there are a few elements um, that you have to consider. So the first one is um, the element of immediacy. Um, so when you're creating um, immediacy, and I apologize, I'm working from home this morning, so <laughs> you might be able to hear my child in the background. Um, when you are creating the element of immediacy, you are involving, um, as the designer, you are involving the learner, and you are kind of creating a sense of urgency. So um, what, you're, what you're doing with the learner is that you're presenting content to them and saying, hey, you need to learn about this right now. This is really important to you. Um, so one of the ways of doing that is actually using storytelling. And we're gonna talk about storytelling here in a bit. But it's a good way to kind of um, create a connection with the learner and make them understand that you need to, they need to pay attention to the content that you're presenting. Um, another in, important point is um, creating an element of malleability. And malleability kind of refers to um, creating relevance to them. So as a learner, this information is important to you because um, you know, you're trying to learn math. So you need to learn about multiplication so that you can move on to the next level. So this is why this is relevant to you as a learner, right? Um, then there's also the element of compel compellingness. So you want to make sure that when you're designing an infographic, you are trying to create interest, you're trying to catch the learner's attention, right? Um, so you can use a narrative that um, allows the learner to easily see what the content would be about. So in that initial example about um, the Swiss washes, they immediately use like a wash. So you already can tell, oh, okay, this is about different Swiss washes, right? So you're creating a sense of compellingness to the learner. Um, then you also have to have an element of resonance. So um, the idea is when you have resonance is that you're leaving a lasting effect. Something that you see that, you know, you're, it's gonna be like three or four months down the road and they're gonna be like, oh, I remember that, um, that had this kind of color. So maybe it is the color scheme that you use. Maybe it is the um, different fonts that you use or how the information is presented in the infographic but it just kind of leaves a lasting effect for the learner. Um, then last, there's, of course, coherence. So you wanna make sure that um, the infographic is logic, includes logic, it's cl clear, and that there is consistency throughout. And I think consistency is extremely important because you, know, you wanna make sure that although your infographic may have different areas, um, the areas relate to each other and the learner understands that how the learners refer, how, the, um, how there's consistency throughout. Um, so just to share a few examples of this, um, I'm gonna share a few that my students have done in the past. 
And I'm gonna skip a slide and then we'll come back to it. So um, this one was created by one of my students a few years ago, and she wanted to present information about the writing process. So I write actually quite often. I try to write every day. I'm a faculty member and I have to do research and I have to write my research, right? So I, I have to write. But writing is not an easy process. And when you're first, you know, going through the process of writing a paper, it can be very challenging. So she um, created this infographic and it puts the different um, elements of the writing process. So she starts with pre-writing, um, then, you know, doing the free writing process, revising your free writing, editing, and then rewriting. And as you can see here, she uses that consistency throughout the um, infographic. So her main kind of processes are uh, gray, and then all the other sub processes have different colors, and she uses the same colors for the sub processes throughout. Um, she connects the um, different elements of the writing process so there is no um, ambiguity as to, okay, so what goes first, what's go what goes next? Um, um, I like the colors that she used myself. I like the color purple. Um, I think that it catches people's attention. Um, maybe it is different for others, but I thought it was something that I could personally relate to. And I thought it was also really neat that she included her um, citations. Another one that I've had in the past from one of my students is um, the Everyday Survivalist. And this one's actually created for, um, by one of my former students called Natasha. And Natasha really enjoys outdoor, doing outdoors activities. And um, I thought the uh, person kind of like doing the zip lining between one and two was really, really neat. I like that. Um, and Natasha also uses the um, numbers to kind of guide you to, you know, this is how you should read my infographic. Uh, you start in the first section, one, two, three, and then uh, four, five, six. Um, and she uses different elements and images that kind of help you if you're interesting about, okay, well, I need to learn about road tripping. So I'll just go directly to number six because I see a car there. Um, it looks like in number three, she's talking about camping. I'm really interested in camping. So I'm going to focus my attention on whatever information she's presenting there. Something um, also that was really neat about Natasha's infographic is that she actually uh, published it on the web, so it has a URL, and all of this information down here, or this one right here actually, the medical kit, if you click on it, it launches to a web page. So you don't have to feel obligated to include all of the information in um, your infographic. You're presenting the most um, relevant information, and if you're using a specific tool and it allows you to create a link, you can do that so that if someone's interested and wants to learn more about that information, they can click on it and go directly to the web page. And I think almost everything that you create these days, not everything, but several of the tools that are available um, allow you to do some sort of like web connection to um, different web pages on the internet. Now, going back to the design process. So one of the things that I like to um, tell my students when they're working on creating multimedia instruction is that before they even go into playing with the software or using kind of uh, any kind of tool, it's really important to have an idea of what you're going to do. So it's sort of like the writing process. I like to outline my paper. So these are the different sections that I'm going to have in my paper before I even think about 
just writing a paper, right? So similarly, when you're designing an infographic, um, my recommendation is to think about the idea that you want to explore in your infographic and think about your learners, think about the context of your instruction, and then narrow down your idea to be as, as specific as you think you can be. And then you go through the process of um, sketching it out, or um, another term that I like to use is called storyboarding. So you're just kind of like drawing um, your idea a little bit, <clears throat> and then that allows you to properly collect the specific data that you need, right? So you're not scattered trying to figure out, oh, what data should I collect? You have already narrowed down your idea and you have sketched out your infographic. So when you're collecting data, you're very uh, specifically targeting um, your certain websites or whatever, however it is that you're collecting your data. Or maybe you're interviewing somebody and you're using that uh, information from that interview to create your infographic. Once you have done um, those three steps, then you can transition to developing your concept, um, perhaps using your tool and laying it out in your infographic um, tool of your choice. And then you can start, um, again, continue exploring with your infographic or developing your infographic. So we have gone through the two examples. Um, and in addition to the two examples I provided, I wanna, I'm gonna be sharing this with Hans Peter so that he can send it to you. But these are two websites in which you can explore hundreds of infographics and get ideas on how to present content. I like to create my infographics from scratch, so I don't like to create, to use templates. Um, but sometimes if you're pressed for time, using a template, a good template is not a bad idea. But normally when I do any kind of design, I like to start from a blank sheet and kind of use my ideas um, to create something. Now, I've kind of talked about um, infographics and how they can be used. Um, how I have used them in the past, I have created posters for um, a research presentation. Um, they can be a visual aid for an internal uh, kind of campaign or a visual aid for a larger campaign. So I can see them being used in, in schools, in elementary schools, in secondary schools. They can also be used for as a newsletter or um, as classroom instructions. I can, I can, they've been used in the past. Um, and with interactive charts, so people can publish their links and individuals can interact with them. Now, can you think of other ways in which you can use infographics? Thinking of your personal life or thinking of your education or uh, future teaching career? Can, is there other ways in which you can see um, how you can use infographics? So probably to publish the rules in a classroom. So then you can make a poster that pupils can see the rules um, every time and then you can also refer to the rules? Absolutely, yes. Um, I actually remember one of my colleagues mentioning that um, she had like this poster right next to the door um, and it was an infographic she created so um, kids could provide um, Kind of like an evaluation of how they felt about their date so that they have a good day that they had an okay maybe today wasn't a good day but um, as the kids would leave the room they would touch um, the area that was more appropriate for them so yeah that's a great example any others that you can think of 
maybe to summarize the most important parts of a lesson or something like that. So to present the most important message in a new way. Yes, absolutely. I could see that. Um, if you are talking about different uh, topics and you want to highlight something that the students have learned, I can definitely see that um, being like a great way to, to summarize the findings. Yeah. Or um, to information that uh, the parents from the children, uh, for example, yes, when they come um, on the begin beginning for uh, from school to information, what are the uh, the competence or what have to the children or anything else mm -hmm. like this. That's yeah, that's a great way. Um, I have a, um, a son, he is three years old, and they, in his school, they recently started using a, a, a class app, and it's private, and every day I get a little bit of information of what they did, what they learned, um, so I can definitely see um, an infographic presenting information of, like, this is what your child learned in school today, and how it relates to the lesson that we're covering. So that's a great example. Um, so I want to share an example that I use um, with my graduate students. Um, so as I mentioned before, I am the graduate coordinator of our instructional design and technology program at the University of Tampa. And I created um, different kinds of social media for our program. So we have a Facebook page and we have a Twitter account, but our, probably our most active um, social media is our Instagram account because everyone's using Instagram these days. And um, it is a great way to share information about what the students are doing in the program and they absolutely i think they love it actually um, and it's also it's a great way for others to know what the students are doing in the program and it is a great way for our alumni so individuals who have graduated from the program they know what current students are doing and it's also a great way for them to each other see you know what they're doing because they don't talk to each other every day um, so in my phone I actually use Canva uh, which is one of the tools that well, I'm gonna share in the next slide but I downloaded the Canva app on my phone and it lets me create like this really um, neat and condensed um, infographics that then I can post to Instagram. So one of the things that I like to do is like whenever one of our students, um, current students or alumni um, transitions to a new position, um, to a new job, they, I ask them like, can you share a picture of you? And I'll create like a little infographic and I'll share like uh, their name, what their new position is and where they're working. Um, sometimes I also share the class activities that we do. So one of the things that we do is um, for the first semester students, they do a scavenger hunt. Do you know what a scavenger hunt is? So, uh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, like a geocache or something like that? Yes, yeah, so um, I give them a sheet of paper and they have different things that they have to do. So they come to campus that day and I tell them like, you have to go to the library and find a book on e-learning and you have to take your picture with it. Um, or you have to go around campus and, and find um, like a security phone. So you know how to call security. Um, or, um, you have to go to the cafeteria and find the ice cream shop. Um, so I do this because I want the students to become familiar with the university campus. Most of them come to campus in the evening, so for six o'clock class, 
and sometimes it's easy to just come into campus um, go to class and then leave and they may not know where different offices and resources are on campus so on the first semester we do a scavenger hunt so one of the things that i do i create an infographic is i um, include the images of their scavenger hunt um, in there and I share it on our Instagram page and if we are having a gathering like we're having a networking event for our current students and alumni I will post that in there as well and that way everybody can get the information um, I don't know if it's similar for you but I sometimes it's easier for them to get the information on Instagram than it is to send an email um, because we get so many different emails. Um, so if I post it on the Instagram, I think that they will probably uh, get the information. So those are great recommendations also for the use of infographic I can think of in the classroom. Thank you. Um, so as I mentioned, there are different um, tools that you can use for creating infographics. Um, Canva is my absolute favorite when I use it on the phone and it's free and you can buy certain things that you have to pay for but everything that it's available for free um, I like I feel like I can get quite a bit done with it so I really like using it on my phone I haven't used it on the desktop but only on the phone Easily is another option. Um, I don't know um, as many people that use Easily, but I know it's another brand that allows you to uh, create infographics. And Infogram actually is more for really interactive kind of infographics. So we talk about clicking on a chart and then showing different kinds of percentages. Um, Infogram would be a great tool for that. My favorite tool to use uh, for creating infographics, uh, specifically on my computer, um, is actually Pictoshar. And this is the one that um, I normally purchase license and give them to my students so that we can use them in the multimedia class. Um, because I, I think it's very easy to use and very easy to navigate. Um, so that's the one that we're actually going to use today. Um, but again, Canva is preferred to me in the mobile, in my phone, and then Pictoshar more as a desktop tool. So, um, as I mentioned before, one of the things that we have to be very careful about is um, using images. Let me see if I can move this. Yeah. Using images um, that are not going to cause any issues with copyrights, right? So we want to make sure that we're um, using images that are free and available for anyone to use. So these are four, these are three websites that you can go to and very easily get images for free. Um, my personal favorite one is Unsplash, but Pix, Pixabay is actually really good as well. And what I like about them is that the images that you obtain for free are extremely high quality. Um, so for example, this image uh, was from Unsplash and this image, image was from Unsplash and this image was from Unsplash. So as you can see they're very high quality so they're not going to get grainy if you expand them and yeah they have many different options so pixabay on splash and more file and uh, the fourth one that i have here is google search and if you go on google um let me see if i can let me see i can go in here and google Okay, I'm trying to 
identify where it is. Um, advanced search setting. Okay, so if you go on Google, let me do it again. So if you go on settings, advanced search settings, um, under the image, you can go on um, usage rights, and then you can modify it so that, you know, whether it is free to use or share, um, free to use share or um, even commercially um, use, free to use, share or modify, free to use, share, modify or even commercially. So that's a good way to, when you do your Google search and you wanna look for images that you can include in your infographic and you wanna feel safe that no one's gonna come after you and say, well, that's my image, why are you using this? Um, you can actually use this. Actually, I realize now I, you cannot see my, my screen, right? That's correct. Um, yes, we can. <laughs> because it's locked to the PowerPoint. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, new share. Let me go here. Um, okay. So let me do it again. So you can see it now, the advanced image search? Yes. Okay, so let me go back. Um, so you go to um, settings, advanced search, and then you can go down and then usage rights, and you can select which one you like. Um, and again, you have the different options of which ones you can, you, you can select in order to use and to search on Google and use images that are okay for you to use um, without any issues. I'm guessing that you have similar copyrights laws in Switzerland, right? Like, so if you create content and you search online, you have to be very careful at what, about what kind of images you use, right? That's, like, that's really important for us um, in the US and I can just imagine that it's very similar in Switzerland. So, okay, so um, the tool that we're going to use today um, is called um, Pictoshare. So I want to uh, share with you a video of it. And, um, so let me play this. Hopefully it's not too loud. Creating a visual project in Pictoshare is super easy, no matter what your role is. Just watch and we'll show you. This is your Pictochart account. When you log in, the first thing you'll see is a templates dashboard. This is where you'll select a previously saved project or create a new project by choosing a template format on the left side of the screen, either infographic, presentation, or printables. Just search or scroll down and browse through the templates list, clicking preview on templates that you think you'll like until you find exactly the one you want to use. Be on a sharp lookout for structure or layout. Think roadmaps, comparisons, lists, etc. Let's go ahead and select this template called Startup Basic. Just click Create to start editing your template. Once you're situated in the Picachart editor, you'll see that it'll be super easy to customize your chosen template. The formatting is already taken care of for you. You just need to go in and change text to fit your needs and change colors on the canvas using your color palette or your own hex values. You can even use a photo and set it as a background too. Changing up a template is exactly how you'll turn one of our templates into your own creation. While charts are certainly an option, let's go ahead and add a map in the next block and repurpose it by changing the percentages and the text description next to it. Let's scroll down to the next block. Here you can see that the basic design and simple layout and spacing is already done for you. All you need to do is once again change the text, maybe add some hyperlinks to outside articles or videos. 
delete the current icons and add icons and photos of your own choosing. If you don't find icons or photos that you want from our library, there's no need to worry. You can easily upload your own images, brand logos, and icons here by clicking on the upload section. You can see that you're quickly changing this template to reflect the exact project you're going for. Let's go ahead and clone this block to add another section to our project. Remember to hold shift when clicking to select two or more elements on the canvas. And finally, our tools are intended to provide data visualizations to back up whatever story you're trying to tell. Here in our charts feature, all you need to do is simply plug in or import your data. Choose your chart format and off you go. You can choose many variations of charts, like this icon matrix, where you can portray your data with an icon of your choosing. You'll notice that if you're using picture chart right, everything should be falling into place with relative ease and speed, and that the changes you're making are pretty straightforward and clear because you're using our templates to your advantage. Our editor does the creative work for you. All you have to do is customize our templates for your needs. Once you're done making edits to your project, there are a few things you can do with it. First, you can make an exact copy of your project by clicking Save As, so that you can work on another variation of it in the future. You can also download your project as an image or PDF and share those as attachments in email or print them from your desktop. Or, you can publish your project by clicking on the Share button. Publishing your project will give your audience permission to see your project no matter how you share it. You can give them the custom link Embed your project on your website or blog, directly share it with someone using a picture card, or if it's for everyone to see, share it with your social media followers on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, or Pinterest. What will happen is when your audience clicks on your shared link, they'll be taken straight to the project. They'll then be able to view your project, interact with it, and leave comments as well. If I were conducting a live webinar or in-person presentation, I could also hop into PictoChart's presentation mode and flip through each block as if they were slides. There's plenty more to learn about PictoChart and creating visual projects, so play around and have some Picto fun. Okay, so we're going to have some Picto fun in a little bit. Um, so now let's transition to talking about um, storytelling. So. Um, some simple rules for designing infographics is one uh, recommendation is to tell a story with it. Um, I think that again, telling a story can be a great way to create that like a compellingness with your learner. Uh, you also want to be very clear. So um, declutter your language and images. Use good data, of course. And then kind of pay attention to the details um, because you're going to give, you're going to present it to someone and they have to be able to navigate it um, without you being there to always guide them, right? So to tell a story, um, this is actually one of my favorite books. Um, I don't know if you have this book in Switzerland, but um, it's called Brown Bear. And um, it's a really neat book. I, I love children children's book. We have quite a few of them for my son. And Brown Bear is my favorite one. Um, so the importance of storytelling, um, it, it's important because it just kind of helps with um, critical thinking. Um, it definitely influences your creativity. So when you're thinking about telling a story, you know, you're sharing something with somebody um, verbally or visually and you're kind of like using your imagination so you have to think about either uh, words that can help um, depict your image your story 
or you can think of images that can help depict your story. So you have to be very creative on how you want them to, to remember your story. It, it also requires collaboration in the sense that, you know, you're, you're presenting the information to the learner, but then the learner is also making their own, um, they're, they're making their own concepts as you're going through the storytelling process. And it definitely requires good communication. I, I don't think everyone is really good at telling a story. I'm not sure if I'm good at telling a story, but I think that for some of us, it may come more naturally than others, right? So why is storytelling important in education? Um, and, and one of the researchers I read, um, they talked about it being important because it creates like a partnership learning model. Uh, what it means is that as the teacher or the instructor, you are connecting with your learner and you are kind of presenting the information to them and then they're using their imagination and their own creativity to um, to kind of like digest the story so you are kind of creating a connection with your learner right um, there are different elements to storytelling to storytelling um, there's your structure so this is you're setting the scene so you know you know maybe somebody was you know hiking and they saw a bear right so you're kind of this are this is the structure of your story then there's the sequence of events that happen um, so what happened after they saw the bear did they try to fight the bear did they run away from the bear you know so what are the events that happen um, then there's the act which is again a combination of sequences and then um, you have your characters you have your main character and um, there's the protagonist and then there's secondary characters there are stories that may not have secondary characters some stories just have a protagonist right um, so who is the protagonist in your story so you, um, so you have to think about perhaps the protagonist in your story is somebody that your learner can identify with, right? So when I look at, um, for example, children's book, um, most of the time is either an animal <laughs> um, because they're learning about animals or it can be another child because they can identify with another child. When you're thinking about adult learners, uh, maybe um, the protagonist can be somebody that is of the same gender as the individual, as the adult learner, um, or maybe that's not um, a requirement. But I feel like sometimes if your learner can identify with the protagonist or can identify with the secondary characters, it can help create a connection for them. Um, and then there's also, again, an element of a storytelling is the climax of the story. So what is that peak moment in the story that you're sharing with your learner? So again, reviewing is storytelling is about engaging your learner, um, engaging in critical thinking, and creating a partnership relationship with your learner. And you can use different elements of storytelling to create that partnership um, learning model with them. Um, but I think especially the characters that you use are, are really important when it comes to a storytelling, right? Um, so I know it's been a lot of information. <laughs> are there any questions, comments, or concerns that you have at this point? Thank you. Okay. For me, it's also okay. 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 So I'm going to assume that everybody is doing okay. Um, so we're going to move on to the creation part, the design part. Um, so 
as I mentioned before, there are four different kinds of tools that you can use to create an infographic. Um, these are very like infographic gear, they're geared towards creating infographic, easily Canva, Infogram, and Pictoshare. Um, my personal one, my personal favorite um, is Pictoshare, and that's the one that I use on my computer. Um, you do have to create an account. Um, it's a very easy process to create an account for Pictoshare. Um, and you can use the account for free. Um, if you want to use the pro version, they have an education discount and it's $20. I don't work for them, so just letting you know. Um, but you can use the um, account for free and you can actually create quite a bit with it. The only um, issue with the account for um, the free account is that when you publish your uh, infographics, at the very end, it has like a little Pictoshare, um, how do you call it? The Pictoshare logo. So that's the only issue with it. Uh, but you can choose any of this. Um, alternatively, you can also use um, PowerPoint if you wanted to create your infographic using PowerPoint. So I will let you choose which one you prefer to use, but we're gonna move on to the design part of this um, webinar. And you're gonna have an activity. Yay! Uh, so the activity is the following. So there are American students that are coming to Lucerne in about four weeks. So this is hypothetical. And uh, PH Lucerne has said, oh my God, Maggie, Michelle, Dominic, you are all going to create a promotional poster that will convince these visitors to do a major activity, visit a place, or eat at a specific restaurant while visiting Lucerne. So you each are gonna create one individually. So you have to choose your activity, place, or restaurant, you have to collect data on whichever you choose, and you have to think about what story you're telling with your data. You also have to think about the consistency of data representation, and you have to include your sources. So what websites do you use to collect this data, or you know, what, where, where did you get this information? So, I'm going to do 30 minutes to start with. And then at 30 minutes, I'm going to check in with you. And if you, did, if you do need additional time, we can do additional time. So um, does, how does this sound? Fine, um, one question. How do we share the infographic later? Um, you'll share, I'll have you share your screen. So, um, so yeah, so we'll take turn. I will. Uh, we will take turns sharing the screen. Okay, so we have to do it on this device. Yes. Or you can, um, if you can, also email it to me. If you if you want to use a different device, um, you can create it and export it as a PowerPoint or as a sorry as an image file or PDF, and you can email it to me. Let me. Um, I'm trying to go to the chat. Okay. So in the chat, I added my email address. If you prefer to create it in a different uh, computer and then email it to me. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to mute my mic and turn my camera off. Um, so I will check in with you in 30 minutes. So it's 8.20 my time, 8.19 my time. So I will come back at 8.20, 30, um, 8.50 and check in and see how far you are. And if you did, and if you need additional time, we can 
do additional time. Okay, does that sound good? Okay. Can you just go back to slide 20 with all the different um, types? Yes. Like, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, this one, thank you. Mm -hmm. So again, you're choosing a place an act, a place, an activity or a restaurant where someone would go to in Lucerne and they're not familiar with Lucerne at all. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I switch back? You just need one of them. Yeah, one just, of yeah, you can pick one, yeah. But you will uh, prefer the picture chart. Um, as far as the tool, my recommendation is PictoShare. It's very easy to use. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go back to the assignment sheet, the activity sheet. Okay. So, okay, so I will check in you win with you in 30 minutes. Okay.
Hi everyone. Um, I just wanted to see how you were doing. If um, you are ready to share or if you feel like you need an additional a few more minutes or like I don't know a bit more a bit more time. Um, for me only five minutes. Okay, we can do. How about you, Dominic? Yeah. Okay, let's do 10 just to be on the safe side. So, okay, so I'll come back in 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. Okay.
Hi everyone, I'm back. And with my little Missy here joining us as a co-presenter. <laughs> no, shh, Missy, shh. Um, are you ready to share? Uh, I just have to copy the image things and then I'm finished. Okay. And I have, uh, yes, we can, I can share, but I'm, I think I'm not really finished, but um, I don't know uh, how much you like to have or to see or it's. Okay, let's do a share and tell. Yes. Um, and what I like to do is, um, I feel like we, I, what I like to do is for classmates to pitch in and so um, give their insights too. So like um, I will share and then um, if Maggie shares, then Dominic can give some feedback as well. And I feel like we have lost Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think for some reason we've lost her, so that's okay. But um, then we can have some feedback from me and from Dominic. So let me stop sharing. And then um, have you used Zoom before, Maggie? Like if you go to the bottom, you should uh, see the share button. No, but... Mm, um no but i like to try i know i have oh okay um excuse me is this music so, you can oh, see yes we can see yes okay also uh, i started i made it by pictok chart mm -hmm. it was the first one and uh i it is a little bit time uh, for for make my experience, but I think it's very good. Yeah, uh, I have a plate of I with a little history, uh, Lucerne, and then uh, where the time lives in Lucerne. You can many see many times, and uh, also yes. Um, yes. The next one is. Um, the Zito, it's a clock tower and this was the first clock in Lucerne and it's also really a beautiful place because you have a beautiful view over Lucerne and this I write here a little bit you can find the tower in one of the most beautiful uh, surroundings in Lucerne and then I would like to um, explain how to, to you get there. And when you start by the train station, I think the train station, uh, all the people know where he is when you come in Lucerne. And here I made a link for Google Maps, but this is, uh, yes, it was a little bit late and yes, I have to, um create or make more experience with this uh, app also with this uh big pictogram chart but i think it's a very good um thing to create very fast also uh infographic i think yes what you know uh, what do you think about my <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I mean, for 30 minutes, it's pretty awesome, I think. Um, Thank you. Um, I like the way it kind of looks. The um, If you go to the second, the first one, and then the second, I love that you keep the consistency of the font. That's really neat. I like that. It just kind of, everything goes well together. Um, I also love that you included the link to the image right there um, beneath it. Mm -hmm. I love giving citations and credit where it needs to be given. So that's really neat. Um, and the idea of including the link to Google Maps, that's very creative too. 
Um, so yeah, that, did you enjoy it? Did you like using it? Yes, uh, really. The uh, on first time I would like do it with a picto chart. Then I had a little bit problem because I didn't know uh, where I have to include a text. But, um, and then I saw the time and I think so, yes, uh, I have uh, 30 minutes or not really many times. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I need, uh, I would like to, take PowerPoint, but PowerPoint, it's not, you ha don't have really um, much um, possibilities. Yeah. It's so not I, get I get back and I tried it and I think it's, yes, when you have five, after five minutes, you, you know, how does it work? It's okay. really Great. I really like it. I, I thought Thank it was you. very creative. And you're right, that is one of the best places for a good view of Lucerne. You have seen. It was there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I uh, yeah, I, I've been there. Yeah, we oh, uh, yes. last time, um, just three of us went um, all the way to the top and tried to snap some pictures. So yes, it's very nice there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Maggie. Thank you. Uh, now, excuse me. Um, Stop sharing. Uh, okay. If you go to the oh, top, sharing. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. So, um, what are the other things? I didn't ask the others. Dominic, Michelle, what did you think of Maggie's picture show? Pretty nice, I think, because um, you have to get used to the interface in the beginning, but then you can create some nice things in little time i think and the database that's there can be helpful um yeah and the idea with sharing the link or the source directly be below the picture was good and the thing you create you wanted to create in the end and um, i did not really understand it right now but i think it's a nice graphic that could tell a cool story Thank you, Dominic. Uh, and I saw that you share yours in the chat. Um, did you sure. want me? Yeah. Do you want me to go ahead and click on it, or do you want to do it? I can click on it, and you can talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Please do. Um, so. Okay. So um, I'm gonna um, close this. So oh, you went to Mom. You did Mom Pilates. Cool. I actually I've never. Every time I go to Lucerne, I want to go to Mount Pilatus, and the weather never works out that yeah. way. It, it like I will go, and then we will do the boat tour, and it looks beautiful. But when I actually want to go there the weather is never good so you usually have to be pretty lucky yeah <laughs> so okay i'll mute myself and then you can talk about your infographic i'll move it up okay so um i think the difference is a bit there's much more photos and it isn't this abstract compared to the one from maki so it's more like a turtle poster or something like that and it's um just some basic information. What can you do there? How can you go, go there? And the intention is to share some nice pictures about the area. And maybe somebody would like to go there because of the view or because of the activities that are possible there. Yeah, but I think it's not really that guided. So. Um, it doesn't really tell a story that much, like the one from Maki. Um, it's more uh, information. And I could add the links, uh, the sources directly to the pictures. I think that would make more sense. Mm -hmm. um, I think it looks great. Um, I think it, it gives the concise information 
of the things that you can do there. So I like that. I especially like the girl going like this. Like, <laughs> I want to do that one day. <laughs> um, the only suggestion that I would have is to um, the fonts to make them more uniform. Um, so it kind of gives a sense of like, oh, okay, so all of this information is at the same level, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I would recommend kind of like making the font more uniform. Uh, the other thing I would recommend is um, thinking about the colors that you use for font, especially in terms of accessibility. Um, I don't know if that's a topic that you discuss um, that how much is discussed at your university, but um, at our university and um, some universities here in the United States, most of them, there is a huge push for accessibility. So content that is um, accessible for individuals who have disabilities. So mm -hmm. for example, so there are certain colors that are preferred over others for reading. So like if you have an eyesight problem, um, so that would be another thing I, I've been meaning to include that in the presentation. So just keep that in mind, which colors are better for reading versus others. But overall, I think you did a really good job in presenting like key information about things to do there. Okay. So um, the red isn't good because of the red green climate? Or? Yeah, so you have to, I'm not sure if red is a bad color. Um, I think it's a little bit distressing when reading. I yeah. can look up more information on it. <laughs> um, but I always try, to, if I can't, to default to black. Um, but I cannot confirm if red is a color that is not necessarily good. I would have to look it up. But just something to keep in mind in general when you are designing um, different color combinations can. Um, be again more distressful to students when they are reading information. So um, we try to design everything as accessible as possible. Um, so for example, when the students create videos in the classroom, every video has to have captions so that if there's a student that is deaf, they can um, still have access to the information. So again, accessibility is just something that we've been talking a lot um, lately and and you know we want to make everything has to be um, ADA compliance um, because it has to do with um, a law like um, I can't remember ADA well, is an accessibility law uh, the act of disability that's what it is the act of disability so everything has to be um, ADA compliance so but and I'm sure the same thing applies in Switzerland um, but I don't know for sure red, the color red, but I just think something to keep in mind. Yeah. So thank you very much, Dominic. Uh, what does the rest of the group think about it? Um, I'm guessing you have all been to Mount Pilatus. I have not, sadly. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dominic did a good job. And also the layout is really compact mm -hmm. so um yeah and also the the um, writing there are more uh, many different kinds written on the poster so that you can catch them and uh, read the most important information about mount pilatus thank you michelle i also like that you included your image sources at the bottom and that you number them. That's really neat. I like that. Um, There's something that I always strive to do with my students is making sure they give credit to where they get their information. So thank you, Dominic. Um, so Michelle, do you want to share yours? Okay. Um, I also um, sent you a link. Okay. In so the in the chat, okay. Yeah. Oh, the Museum of Transport. Yay, I love. Oh, I can't go back. Right. Um, let me go in here. Thank
for some reason it says the page you were looking for does not exist. Oh, okay. Do you so want to try share? Share? You can share, yeah. If you can yeah. go to the middle button in green, it says share. Okay, perfect. Does it work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <laughs> I just had a problem with this text frame at the beginning because I don't know, I have a security thing that didn't work and then I couldn't move them directly into the, um, on this page, but uh, at the end it worked. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, I just try to give some, um, some personal feedback mm -hmm. with those two. Um, I didn't know it was the most visited museum in Switzerland. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> it was said on TripAdvisor. <laughs> and I also tried to use the um, pictures from Pixabay, but mm -hmm. there were just two pictures available. Okay, okay, yeah, I see. So I, had, I need to take um, those with the airplanes, mm -hmm. but there are also other um transport systems um, in the museum and then i also made two diagrams mm -hmm. one with the um what does uh, what we can say about the trip and one about the frequency and okay. i then i evolved them into the page and i also that the um located the museum so that you easily can find and that it will also show that it's near the lake. Okay. Did you use the chart feature in sure. PictoChart, like chart, um, S H S H A S S no, sorry, C H A R T, like the chart? No. Oh, okay. uh, no, um, like they have a chart feature. Let me move it here where you can enter data and it will create a chart? Ah, no, I just t uh, took the data from TripAdvisor. Oh, okay. I just <laughs> made a chart. <laughs> so we didn't have a, a, a much time, so I need to <laughs> Yeah, yeah think quickly, things, yeah. But <laughs> Very smart. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw that you can do that, like, um, Shark, no, not shapes. Yeah, you can do I it. Think, I saw that. Yeah, I think one of them yeah. it lets you do it. Okay, mm -hmm. I was wondering if you if you've used that one because no. it, it looks like something that they would have there. It looks very professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I like it. Um, so you says number one for family day trips. Oh, okay, so I see. So it's very popular, I guess. I liked it. I just for publicity. <laughs> uh, actually, one of the things that I really liked about it, there is a chocolate store there. Yes. And uh, they had like um, the chocolates were made on the shape of the airplane, and I thought that was really neat. So <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it looks good. I I mean, it looks it looks good like a marketing material, most yeah. visited museum in Switzerland. And um, I really like the detail on the bottom with the um, image and then kind of like that um, Google pin um, where it says close to the rail station at Luzerne. So how do you like working with the tool? Um, I liked it, but at the beginning it doesn't really work because of the banking security system. And then I just need to know um, what I can do that it will work. Because okay. all those text fr frames weren't available. So I just had those I had to. Oh, okay. But now I it see. works. <laughs> okay, it's really interesting to know. Yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> like, um, okay, well, thank you very much, Michelle, for sharing. Thank you. Um, so let me so go back. I have back. to go back. Yeah, um, I think you go on the top and it should come up and say, like, stop sharing. Um, oh. Like, if you go to the top of the screen. Uh. Okay, there we go. Um, okay. So, well, this um, kind of concludes our 
um, meeting for today. I, I hope it was a good experience in becoming familiar with um, creating infographics and um, identifying a good infographic tool to use in the future and also um, thinking about how you create a design and perhaps integrate a story into your design. Um, I like using infographics quite often and my students love using them. They use them for all sorts of different things. It's also a great way to create like a logo or an image um, and then using it to create a course online or um, they use it in their presentations as well. Um, so again, I hope this was a beneficial experience for you. I just wanted to introduce you to the concept of designing an infographic and also get you to practice a little bit. It does take time. Um, designing takes time and thinking about the ideas that you want to present takes time. So um, I hope it, it was, again, a good experience. Do you have any questions, comments, or um, anything that you would like to share? Probably, um, can you give the slides to Hans Peter? Yes, I will definitely do that. Um, I will give him the slides in PowerPoint and then I will also share a link of the recording so that if you want to go back and listen to anything that I said, um, you can most definitely check it. And I will also give him my email. So if you ever um, want to contact me, have any questions, or if you're ever in Florida, um, please come visit me at the University of Tampa. Um, <laughs> it's um, quite sunny and hot still. <laughs> um, so please come to Florida and, and visit us here. So uh, I've enjoyed talking to the three of you. You've been very nice and I, I appreciate you um, sticking around for the presentation. Yeah, thank you too. It was a nice time. <laughs> thank you. Well, I will let you go, um, and um, I will be in touch with Hans Peter uh, with uh, the slides and the recording, and then you can also find my information and contact me if you want to. So thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Yeah, you too. And all the best. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye. 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 Goodbye.